Well, in company results, Calgro has reported a 27% increase in first-half headline earnings per share. Company also saw an 8% rise in revenue. And joining us now to look at those numbers is company CEO Ben Peer Malheba. Morning, Ben Peer. Uh, it's good morning. always good when the revenue is eight and the earnings and the profit are higher than that. So, on the one hand, you talk about challenging conditions. Every company that's reporting in South Africa is talking about challenging conditions. But you must have done something right there. I think what you see uh, happening currently is the elections coming up next year. There's a big infrastructure spend. So we're seeing a lot of um, infrastructure being installed um, leading up to our integrated projects. Now, the interesting thing about your company is that you're not just a developer. You actually, it's the full chain of development. And the main parts of it, acquiring the land, developing it, building, and finally handing it over, I presume, the keys of, of the front door. Yeah, I think the business model is based on the fact that we say we want to be a turnkey approach. So we are the landowner, we own the town planning company, we do the uh, development side of it and then the construction. And they're just an attempt to um, keep a couple of hands out of the till so there's, um, we can come into the market at affordable prices. What about, uh, you mentioned the infrastructure now, when you say with the elections coming up, government is concerned to be seen to be providing that infrastructure. How is yours characterised? Because you talk uh, about mixed use, it's not uh, at the low end or the high end. So give me an example of uh, a mixed use development that draws on various uh, parts of, of, the, of that uh, market. If you, look like a, uh, if you look at a project like Fleur, for example, it will include fully subsidised housing, which is now called B&G. It also includes social housing and then the entry level with the new FLIS, which finance linked individual subsidy and all also the um, bonded market where anyone that can afford to get a bond from the financial institutions. So it's quite a nice mix of all those market segments. Now there was a problem because you had people with subsidised housing, I suppose what's known as the RDP houses, yep. and then you've got people at uh, the other end which uh, qualify for bonds with higher salaries. And there was this gap of people who weren't earning little enough to qualify for a government subsidy and weren't earning enough to get to the bank and uh, get a bond from them. That's been narrowed, hasn't it, or has the problem gone away now? No, no, the problem is not gone yet, mm. but they're definitely narrowing the gap. If you look at the market segment, that's anyone earning between um, three and a half thousand rand. If you earn less than three and a half thousand rand, you can qualify for the, the subsidized housing. If you earn um, more than that, you exclude it. So then you, the next bracket is at the top end of that market is where you earn enough to get a bond. Now that market's been addressed by two sides. Firstly is the new FLISP, that's a finance linked individual subsidy mm. program where that um, hard cap has been removed. So there's a sliding scale now. In an attempt to help those who want to help themselves and not simply disqualify people that earn three mm. ticks and six and higher. So that's the one side and there's also a, a big drive with social housing where people that don't qualify for um, bonds as yet, but they can qualify for the rental component which is the social housing. Sounds like this is good for you, this uh, modification. Good news, yeah. yeah. Looking at the prospects ahead, uh, you do, there's a nuance in your statement where you talk about uh, the stages of construction, your profit margins on the earlier stages of construction are not as big as later. Does that mean you're storing up some good profits to come? Yeah, it's actually just a sign that there's growth to come. Um, we also, we always said we're looking for a margin of 20 to 25 percent. So while you're doing infrastructure installation, the margin's under pressure. As, and our re revenue is only recognised by the time you're doing the top structure construction. So when you get to a stage where you're actually building the houses itself, the revenue is coming back. But uh, the revenue or the margin that's da down is just an um, indication that we're doing more infrastructure than actually building houses at this stage. Okay, and you've got a pipeline worth 10 billion. Now break that down into how, how many houses does that translate into? How many uh, particular developments where you've got clusters of housing? That will equate to about 40,000 units on the ground. So about on completion will be about 40,000 units completed. Okay, and uh, what sort of thing keeps you awake? One thing, where, uh, one thing that uh, in this economy, in the construction industry, where companies do say they are concerned is sometimes it's payment by government. By government, we don't necessarily mean national government, but provincial and uh, municipal government. Issues around payment and contracts? Currently, no. We went through um, financial year end once again with not a lot of money outstanding from um, the city of Cape Town, city of Johannesburg, Gauteng province, or province Western Cape. I think uh, we're in a partnership rather than working for government, and it's a give and take. I think the public-private partnership is currently working in this market segment. Mm.